Hi there, it's Ali from the Marine Conservation Society. Thank you for being here. Uh, the sun is out, as you can see, which is a good thing because the sun is a very, very important part of what we're going to be talking about today, which is we're going to have a go at making, that's my drum roll, we're going to have a go at making a rain gauge. So quick question, where does rain come from? It's a good question. I'll let you have a think. Yep, you've got it. So from think of your rivers and your streams, your ponds and your lakes, and especially the 70 odd percent of this planet that is ocean. So the sun comes out, it heats up the surface of the water and water molecules evaporate up into the sky and form clouds, come over land, cool down, and we get our lovely rain to turn our parks and our lawns green. Really important thing, especially when we're all talking about weather so much more and especially weather over a long period when we can talk about weather becoming climate. So think of every little raindrop really as a little bit of ocean. There's every chance there's a bit of ocean in the rain. Every single raindrop that falls on you, every single raindrop that you can catch in your rain gauge, in your garden, is a little bit of ocean dropping in there. And it's a fascinating scientific and fun thing to do. And it's a really good way to start exploring what it is to study something and understand a bit more of what's going on around this wonderful world that we live on. So how do we make it? Let's dip out our bag and find out. A bottle. I'd say a two litre one is probably best because we've got a slightly bigger aperture, bigger gap to get the rain in. A ruler, gonna be important, or this is the UK. You might need a tape measure. I think a ruler will probably do it. It's just a little joke, it's not a very good one. So, a Sharpie, you're gonna see why in a moment. Doesn't really matter which color. Pair of sharpish scissors, and if you're very young, please do ask your grown up to do a bit of the cutting and the poking for you. I don't want anyone cutting their fingers off and sending them into the Marine Conservation Society. So, and also some tape. And I'll talk about this diary a bit later, but you will need it. So we'll come back to this later. Right now, we'll throw it away. So this is all you need to make your, let's call it a rain catcher at the moment, but it will become a rain gauge. Now a gauge is something that measures something and we can then talk, so that's the thing. And also scientists, when we later on talk about climate change, which we will do and talk about collecting and storing and recording this rain, scientists will talk about gauging weather and gauging what's going on around the world. So suddenly the word gauge becomes a verb. Interesting, just a little bit of English there. So let's look at making the thing. You will need sharpest scissors. What I would say is you're going to take a little hold through here, hopefully we can see this okay. Drive the scissors carefully through. As I said, if you're a really young person, do please ask your grown up to do that. And then we're going to cut round. Now, hopefully you're seeing this. And probably with the magic of Dan behind the camera, because he is the magic man, you might even need some editing to make this look like I've made it really neatly. So we've cut that off. Now, we've almost made it. It's really simple, right? But what is important right now, we don't need the lid. But very interestingly, I'm hoping you can see on this bottle lid, it says, please recycle me. Most places these days will take bottle lids. So don't just throw this away. Make sure that goes back into your recycle box. And I'm kind of hoping you're all struggling to find plastic in your recycle box because you've all taken the plastic challenge in July with the Marine Conservation Society. Let's cut down on our single use plastics. But whilst we're using it, let's get it back in to the system and recycled. So we'll put that to one side. And here's our funnel into our rain catcher. So you simply place that in the top. And what I might need to do is just hold that up because the wind has decided to come up in the park, which is quite interesting. Place that in the top and we're going to get our tape. Cellar tape is absolutely fine. Any kind of tape is fine if I can find the end. And really, quite simply, we're going to make sure 
our funnel doesn't fall out of the bottle. Now, that's kind of it, as you can see. Can we see the funnel there going down in? The rain's gonna fall in there and go down there. And now we need our wonderful, you can see, my very, very best ruler that I brought with me today. And we're gonna measure one centimeter marks up the side. So imagine you place that right next to level with the bottom, and we're going to mark up the side of the bottle little bits, little lines at one centimeter, which is how you are going to gauge, to measure, to record the rain that falls in your garden. So let me just do that now. Take my marker pen. So hopefully you can see this. I'm going to put this right along the bottom. Hopefully you can see that mark there. That's level with the bottom here. So one, two, let's go up to 10 now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. This is the UK, so we could always go up to 100. But I think we, once we've got our lines, it would be quite a good idea. Just make them a little longer. Make them a little longer like that, so it's really clear for you to see. Like that. So I'm hoping, I'll just put the lid back on that so I don't ruin that. I'll take some of these things away as I no longer need them. Don't remember. We do recycle your bottle tops. Put these over here, close the scissors, pass those away, handle first. So we've made our rain gauge. Now, the reason why I talked about uh, using a jar is the way to make a rain gauge out of a jar is you draw, your, you draw your marks on, you take the lid on and you've got the same thing. So we've both got the wide aperture, the opening into the gauge and we would place this. The other great thing about a nice jar is glass is quite heavy, which is one of the reasons why manufacturers do use plastic. It's an amazing material. It's light, it's strong, it's durable, but I do think we use a bit too much of it and we need to turn the plastic tap off anyway. So we will place that somewhere out in the open, not under a tree or next to a, a, a house. And we're gonna collect the rain and record this, which we will talk about in a moment. If we're gonna make it out of our plastic bottle, which is very light. As I said, it's one of the amazing things about plastic. And in fact, it's so light, it blows away everywhere and floats around all over the place. What you might want to do is simply grab a plant pot or something like that, put some stones around, hold that in, in place. Now, if you're then going to put that into your garden, nice and solid and safe, bury this right down, you can do that better than I've just demonstrated. Nice and steady there, put it somewhere flat out the way, make sure you're not going to trip over it, or indeed your friends, your family, uh, or your dog or your cat tripping over your lovely rain catcher. But this has now been turned from a rain catcher into a rain gauge, and it really is as simple as that. If you need to watch that bit again, just rewind about a minute, it's dead dead easy. Very few things needed. Make sure if you're very young, you get your grown up to do the scissors bit, but it's dead easy and we can do some science with it. Okay, so we're just gonna demonstrate. We have some magic hand and a small amount of water coming up. If we could just tip some water in the top, a very small amount of water in the top there, just a tiny bit. Perfect, thanks very much. You can see how the funnel worked. It's gonna collect our water and over the week, it's gonna come up and then on your Sunday, I would suggest, we'll talk about that later with our diary, you can take a mark of how many centimeters of water have fallen in the garden. We've turned the rain, the rain catcher, this little thing into a gauge. What is a gauge? A gauge is a thing. It's our thing that we've made. And a gauge is a verb as well. A gauge is to compute, to work out, to calculate. So what we're going to calculate is the rain that falls in our gardens. It's very important if you're gonna take your jar, and we'll show you this in a moment, don't put your jar straight underneath a tree. Probably you're gonna get a bit of an effect of the cover from our lovely uh, fruit tree of some sort, stopping the rain going into our jar. We are gonna get false results. So put it out somewhere in the open, put it nice and flat and steady. If you've made a rain gauge out of a plastic bottle, find a plant pot, a bit of sand, a bit of soil or a few stones, and prop it up safely on a flat surface away from a house or a shed, or of course a tree or a shrub. We want it in the open, if you can, to catch the rain that falls. An important thing to do when we talk about rain is its effect on our climate. And when we look at weather, 
looking at weather is not climate, but looking at weather over a very, very, very long time is helping us talk about climate. That is how we can talk about climate change. So this is where we come back to using our diary. It's important from a scientific perspective, take your measurements at the same time of day each time. Let's think you've played football, you've played hockey, you've gone for a bike ride, you've done your gymnastics, you've done all your homework on a Sunday. Sunday evening, go out to your rain gauge and take a measurement of what you're finding. Keep a red record every Sunday, how much rain has fallen. Now, an interesting thing on such a lovely, hot, sunny day like today, and I know the forecast, is that there hasn't been a huge amount of rain. That is an important thing to measure as well. Is there less rain than you thought there might be? How did the rain that fell in your garden compare to the forecast that you saw on the news? This is a great thing to look at, and it's really scientific. Why have we made a rain gauge? Now, I am gonna use my nice glass jar which is really easy to make into a rain gauge because you just take the top off, draw your Sharpie marks on at one centimetre intervals like we discussed, and here's your rain gauge. But I really prefer glass because one, it's made of sand, so it's like a bit of beach in your hand. And I just want to get away from hoping that you guys are finding far less plastic in your recycle box to have used a plastic bottle to even make a rain gauge. But I'm really, really pleased that you could reuse that plastic bottle and repurpose these things and certainly glass, it's old fashioned, but it works really well. And why do we measure rain? Well, we might be a case of us finding out about how little rain is falling. If you think uh, late in 2019 and in the early part of this year, our friends down in Australia had some really, really awful bushfires. It'd been really, really dry out in Australia, even drier than normal. And they've had worse fires than they've ever had. So recording a lack of rain is also an interesting, important thing to do. But in our rain gauge, what we do find, it's important to think about what is this rain giving us? It's giving us all of the green grass and our green trees. It's giving us the water that we drink and flush our loos and fill our baths. It is everything that we need pretty much to survive along with the oxygen that we pull out of the atmosphere. It's important. How does it matter to exactly to you? Well. You've probably had a, a squash today or maybe a cup of tea. I've had a few coffees, all made mainly with water. But when we look at weather over a long period of time, we come back to the diary here, we can, this is what scientists help to do to talk about climate change. This is weather right now. But if we record this in our diary and look at it day after day, year after year, decade after decade, we can start to talk about climate and the change in that climate. And it's a nice thing, a little experiment for you to do at home to start understanding how scientists go about finding the information they need to talk to us about how climate is changing. Thanks so much for being with us today. It's been good. It's been lovely and hot and sunny in the park today. Thanks to Dan for coming to film. Thank you, Dan. And what would be really important would be look at the links that we've put underneath this little video there's some really great stuff on there talking about the bushfires in australia talking about the water cycle go and study this go and find out what you can find out in your garden and i talked about weather and then studying over a long period of time lots of these diaries and then talking about climate and the change please join us again fairly soon where we're going to take a more in-depth look at climate change and come back, talk to us about that, and maybe let us know just what you're finding in your garden. Thanks, and see you again another time. Bye.